Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another reading vlog. Maybe weekly, maybe weekend, who knows. It is currently Saturday. I am dressed for once, if you can't tell. But basically I am headed out today to go to the camera store with my dad. We're going on a little excursion um, because I wanna pick up a new camera lens for my, my beloved, my beloved camera. Um, I guess I don't really talk about cameras on this channel, but cameras are another hobby of mine. It's not a hobby I'm very good at, um, nor is it a hobby that I currently like spend that much money into. Like I haven't bought a camera lens or anything in probably over seven or eight years. Um, but this is the camera I use. If you've ever wondered what camera I use, not for vlogging. Um, I do use another camera for vlogging, but for my sit down videos, I just use my old little like Olympus pen light. This is the EPL six. I think this came out about 10 years ago I've had it for almost as long and it works just fine I currently have a pancake lens on it but I want to get a prime lens for it I just feel like it is time for me to finally fucking get a prime lens the only other lens well that's not true the only other like modern lens I have is the kit lens that came with this camera and then I also have a number of other like vintage lenses that are all manual that are good for photography but not very good for video um so I just want to pick up a prime lens that I can shoot some b-roll with, you know, all that fun stuff. I think I'm just really excited to go pick up a new lens. This isn't the only camera I own, by the way. <laughs> I do have a bit of like a camera collection. If you are interested, by the way, in seeing either like a camera collection video or like a what equipment I use to film my videos with, let me know in the comments down below. And then in terms of what I'm reading, I actually started a couple of books last night and I'm about a third of the way through both of them. So I thought it would be a good time to start the vlog anyway. Um, on audio, I'm currently reading The Millhouse Murders. Um, I can't remember the author's name, but it's the same author as The Decagon House Murders, which I haven't read the novel yet, but last year, one of my favorite books of the year, well, series of the year, was the manga series for The Decagon House Murders. I just thought that the mystery was done so well. It was so intricate and like well woven. Um, and I saw this on NetGalley and I requested it. The book is now out and I still haven't read it. And so now I have it on audio because the book is now out, you know? Um, <laughs> and so I am currently reading that. I'm 35% of the way through it. I'm very intrigued by what's going on. Basically, it's kind of told in dual timeline. So you flip back and forth from the past to the present. It's one year apart. And basically at this like mill house, which is a house owned by the son of this like very famous painter um, who is not a painter himself, but he is like a bit of a connoisseur and basically after his father's death he went out and like purchased all of his father's works and so he basically has like an almost complete collection of his father's works and the only way that people can come see these works is that every year once a year on I think it's like September 28th he invites this like small group of people to come and view this collection essentially um one year before the present day in the book so like the past timeline what happens is there's a series of deaths that occur during this like one year gathering um that ends in the death and like dismemberment of the one and only like protege of the dead artist and we don't really know like what's happened there and so that's kind of like the central mystery and then in the present day we are one year on from now and we have kind of like invited back these people plus one other character who's kind of like our detective character who is a character who was in the Decagon House Murders as well. Um, so that's kind of the setup. It's very interesting. There's a lot going on as I kind of expect given that it is like a continuation sort of or like a spinoff of the Decagon House Murders which was also like a very intricate kind of complex multi-timeline mystery. Um, I really enjoy this so far. It's very like gripping. It's very interesting. I don't know if I love it as much as the Decagon House Murders yet but that being said I feel like the Decagon House Murders didn't like grip me until like the last third. Like the first two thirds I thought were just like fine good fun and then it like instantly shot up to like a five star like once the reveal started happening. So I'm excited to see what reveals are coming down the line in this book. Um, but then the other book I've been reading is There Will Come a Darkness. If you watch my last reading vlog I actually hauled this during that vlog um, but I have sometimes noticed that like the time in which I'm the most excited for a book is actually when I purchase it. Um, and so I ended up starting it. I didn't actually read that much until last night though. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm now again, a third of the way through it almost. I just finished part one of the book. 
and I actually don't even know if I could tell you like an overarching plot yet because there are five POVs in this book and I would say there's like two overarching kind of like plot lines but let me try to explain this concisely. Basically in this world that we're in um, there used to be these seven I think seven prophets of the world and they used to you know I don't know like protect the people of the world or something I don't know but one day they disappeared before they disappeared they left behind uh one last prophecy basically um saying that the last prophet will come um but nobody knows about this the kind of like organization cult if you will <laughs> that like protects this like prophecy they have not made that known to public so there's only a very small number of people who know about this and so we follow one character who is ascending into the position in which his role is to like protect this last prophet whenever they come another pov is this like prince who was exiled from his country. People suspect he might be alive, but basically the his parents used to rule over the lands, but then there's like uprisings. And so there was like a coup basically. Um, and what you have to know about this world is that there is like a magic system called grace, which basically means that there are like four types of magic that you can have. And traditionally the royal family, they have all had rulers that have grace of some sorts. However, our prince, he does not have any magic whatsoever. And so he's always had like a bit of like a imposter syndrome, uh, inferiority complex sort of situation around that. Anyway, his storyline involves like he's now taking refuge in this city. Um, and he needs to figure out some way to, you know, like, come back into power. I don't know. But basically, in this city, there is this like, other kind of religious figurehead, almost religious-like figurehead called the Hierophant? Hierophant? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce the word. Anyway, he basically and his followers do not believe in this magic. They don't trust it. They think that it is, like, bad. And so, like, they are causing kind of, like, unrest in the city because of this. It's very, like, culty, religious fanatic vibes. I'm really liking it. And then these two storylines I would call kind of like the more political side of things. Like these are the two storylines that involve kind of like the politics of the world um, and the countries and stuff like that. And then on the flip side, there is like this other storyline in which there are two POVs that are linked right from the beginning. They're two sisters. One of them is an assassin or like a vigilante type of character. She goes out and kills um, bad people in order to take their life force. Like she has grace of heart, I think they call it. I don't know. But she has like the healing magic, but she uses the healing magic in order to take life from one person and basically pass it on to her sister who is really, really sick. Um, and so her sister is the second POV in this like storyline. And then there's a third kind of semi related storyline in which you follow this character who has like scrying magic. Um, and so he can like find objects using his magic. Um, however, he has a lot of like trauma around it. So he doesn't use his magic very much even though he is very very powerful um and essentially these two sisters need to find something in order to permanently or try to permanently heal the sick sister and so they are trying to find this guy in order to help them find the thing does this all make sense to everyone? No, because it doesn't make sense to me. I'm just like here, you know, like I'm just here following this journey. I feel like I have told you quite a lot about like the book overall. It's very hard for me to explain what the plot of this book is because there's like multiple plots happening and it does take the book like a good 100, 130, 40 pages to really set up what these multiple storylines are. I can feel this being like a very solid 3.5, four star kind of book and I'm really excited to continue on and I'm glad I have the second book um, and I definitely feel like if I enjoy this book enough I will end up picking up the third book regardless um, just to kind of finish out the trilogy. Um, but yeah that is it for this check-in. It was entirely way too long. I'm gonna go now because I have to go have lunch with my family and then my dad and I are gonna go to the camera shop which is exciting. But yeah anyway that is it for this check-in and I will see you at the next one.
friends. Happy Monday. I need to stop saying happy Monday because it's almost never a happy Monday and especially this week because work, work is busy me off. Anyway, <laughs> I meant to check in yesterday because I actually do have reading updates and I was going to take you along and show you my dim sum because we went for dim sum yesterday. But honestly, yesterday was just kind of like a rough day mentally. And so like I couldn't even enjoy dim sum because if you've ever been to a dim sum restaurant like a proper chinese dim sum restaurant it's loud it's loud and when i am like already my brain is already like in overdrive it's just it's just a lot it's a lot and so yesterday was a lot anyway point is i do actually have quite some reading updates first things first i did finish the millhouse murders um and i ended up giving this two stars not because i think this is perhaps like the worst book ever i guess i should clarify what two stars means to me i wouldn't say like i actively like hated a two star book but i also like overall did not like the book you know um or it was like very disappointing to me in one way or another but a two-star book under the right circumstances, I might still recommend it to someone else, if that makes sense, you know? Um, and this is how I feel about this book. I think the bulk of the, like, disappointment really just comes from me, like, loving the Decagon House Murders. And specifically, what I loved most about the Decagon House Murders was, like, I just could not see it coming. Like, I could not see the, like reveal coming and I just thought it was so smart and so clever and I feel like with the Millhouse murders it was so predictable. I feel like right from the beginning you can pretty much guess what the plot twist is gonna be and I just don't like when my mysteries are predictable. Like I like when I read a mystery and I feel like the characters are smarter than me and I just didn't feel that way with this book. I kind of just felt like I was just, I just kept waiting for something else to be the thing because like, like I said, I just, I had suspected it from the beginning. So I was like, surely this can't be it, but it kind of was it. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, that's fine, <laughs> I guess. There was like a little bit at the end that was like kind of interesting, but we didn't delve deep enough into that element. And again, I don't want to spoil it, but we didn't delve deep enough into that particular element for me to feel like that redeemed the predictability of like most of the reveals um and so that was kind of disappointing to me the other thing i didn't really like about the millhouse murders is the characters like i feel like with the decagon house murders and again granted i did not read the novel so maybe this is a thing that they like improved upon in the manga like i'm not sure but i feel like with the decagon house murders manga like the characters were all so interesting and like i really enjoyed the characters whereas with this one the characters are all so fucking flat not a single one of them has a personality um they are all just like so boring to be honest and they're so indistinguishable from one another there's one character specifically yurie who is like the wife of the owner of this like mansion first of all very uncomfortable age gap situation so like if you're sensitive to that definitely keep that in mind like it's not condoned in the book or anything like that but it's just something that like if you are sensitive to just keep that in mind anyway but she has no personality whatsoever and i just like hated that in comparison to i feel like in decagon house murders there were a couple of female characters both of which um, I felt like were interesting characters. And so again, I just like, I can't help but compare them. Again, probably, perhaps a little unfairly, because like I said, I didn't read the original novel for Decagon House Murders. And so maybe I am unfairly judging this book. But based on my expectations of the book, I was definitely let down by the overall like, final product of the book. I will say what I do really love about the book, and I mentioned this I believe at the beginning, but I just love the setup of the book. I think that this author is really really good at coming up with just these like really intricate multi-timeline, multi-layered mysteries, and the setup of the story is just so fascinating. I just feel like this one didn't have the payoff that I feel like Decagon House Murders did, but I think that if you are a fan of classic, like, locked room mysteries, I do still think you'll get some enjoyment out of this. Like, while I was reading it, I still had a good time with it, and I still enjoyed parts that I read of it. I think it's just that, like, looking back on it once I finished it, it just, like, the payoff really let down the story for me personally, but 
but I think your mileage may vary. Like, I think that if you just are along for the ride, you're not expecting, like, the biggest, you know, plot twist ever like I did, unfortunately. I think you will have a better time than I did, probably. I don't know. Maybe read this one first and then go back to Decking on House Murders is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm not sure. But yeah, I finished that yesterday. I also just spent a lot of yesterday in bed reading a whole bunch of shoujo manga. Um, but I also have made a bit of progress on There Will Come a Darkness. Um, I'm now on page 273, so I'm just over halfway through the book, and I am really, really enjoying this book. The plot has really picked up, but beyond that, I just am really enjoying how the different um, POVs are intersecting and how they're coming together. Um, and I really enjoy the character Characters. I really enjoy it. like the writing like this is just one of those books where I actually haven't spent that much time reading this book but like anytime I pick up this book I just fly through the pages I find it very compelling very easy to read and like I'm just having such a great time with it I think it has a nice balance of like um just kind of like plot stuff but also like politics and there's definitely like a tiny 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 bit of like angst in one of the kind of like storylines and I really like it. I think it's done really 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 well. I think at the point where I'm at now if I'm not mistaken all of the POV characters have met each other. No that's not true. I think one of them still hasn't met most of them but I think most of them have kind of like crossed paths at one point or another and so again like just really really good stuff. I'm really enjoying this book. I think it is so good. I think it is just like a really solid YA. However, I think it is complicated enough in its politics and world building that I can totally understand why it's published by Orbit in the UK um, and Europe and how it can be perhaps considered like more of a crossover title. I will say the only thing is the age of the characters is ridiculous to me. I think what they said one of the characters is 15 and the other one's like one of them is like 16 and I'm like these were age down for sure in order to be sold as YA like I just it irritates me I just hate it when you're reading a book and they like drop the age and it's something like 15 or 16 and you're just like I understand this is a fantasy world but like there's no way in hell this character was like drafted as a 15 or 16 year old like this was for sure supposed to be like a, an 18 year old you know what I mean and I just like I feel that way with this book um and so to be quite honest with you in my head canon they're not 15 and 16 they're like 18 19 20 you know and I think that you would also benefit from this little adjustment in your mind you know <laughs> but aside from that I really have no complaints about this book like I'm just having a grand old time with this book I think unless the rest of this book like really drops the ball I think this is going to be at least a four star book and I'm so excited I'm very very excited that I already have the next book lined up and ready to go I feel like it's been a while since I've read a book that I genuinely find like this easy to read I think sometimes even if I'm enjoying a book like it's not an easy read and I have to like spend time and energy reading it whereas like this one I just pick up and I feel like I can turn my brain off but still get a lot of enjoyment out of it and then if I want to turn my brain back on there are still a lot of things to think about and that's like my favorite kind of book really uh the Poppy War series anything by like R.F. Kong kind of like sits in this category for me where it's like if I want to think about it I can but if I don't I can also like get so much enjoyment out of it I just love books like this I just think that they are the perfect balance Anyway, um, that is it for this check-in. I will check in with you once I have more updates. Hopefully, like, I can finish this in the next couple of days. I'm not sure. Probably. Honestly, can I finish this tonight? That's a little ambitious. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, I don't know when I'll check in next, but I will see you at the next one. Hello, friends. Just checking in. It is Tuesday. Is it only Tuesday? Oh my god, it's only Tuesday. Anyway, it's Tuesday, and if you can't tell, I'm not currently at home right now. I'm currently at my parents' house because my building has not had water since last night. And basically, I woke up this morning and there was no water. I couldn't, like, brush my teeth. I had no drinking water. But then because I have this thing where I may or may not be a bit of a germaphobe, so I'm like, if I have to go out to purchase water when I come home because I can't shower, that's a problem. That's a problem for me personally. Anyway, point is, I grabbed my things and I just went to my parents' house to work here for the day in hopes that the water would come back by the time I finish work. It doesn't look like that's going to happen for me, so I still don't really know what's going to happen. But anyway, I thought I would do a check-in right now. I have not read any <laughs> of my book, There Will Come a Darkness, but last night I ended up starting 
and getting caught up on a condition called love, which is another shoujo manga, slice of life, high school romance, <laughs> which my library had like pretty much all of the volumes available. So I just borrowed them. Um, and I read it all. And this is one of those series that honestly, I don't really like that much. But at the same time, it's not bad enough for me to like DNF it. And like, there is enough there that I'm like, I want to see where this is going, but also I'm not really enjoying this <laughs> at all. It's basically like about this guy who is just like super intense and like is very obsessive about his love, which is like a common character archetype, but it's not one that I like very much at all. And I usually do try to avoid these. I do think that over the course of like 12 volumes now, the mangaka has like done work to kind of like criticize this type of character archetype which I do like but at the same time I still don't like it and it also takes so long to get there and then the female lead is basically just like this cute little like sunshine type of character but she also like is not a romantic and is not very into love at all and I do like her character I don't know if I like her character development that much to be honest I don't know if I like any of the characters development that much basically the setup of the story is that she and her friend witness him getting dumped um, at a cafe and he's like a very popular guy at her school and then she lends him an umbrella because it starts snowing and then the next day he decides he's like in love with her and asks her out and she's like no but eventually she agrees to date him on like a trial basis because she wants to like learn about love or whatever um yeah it's like it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel bad saying it's just fine because, like, I know this is a really popular one and I know that a lot of people love this manga. I feel like I'm just missing something, you know? Like, I feel like I'm the problem. I don't know. Anyway, I'm all caught up on it now. And the most exciting thing in the world of shoujo manga has ever happened. Okay, so <laughs> basically, if you've been around for this long, three years ago, I made a video talking about the Shonen Jump app and how much I love it and how much I think it's like such a fantastic app and how accessible it is. And it's something that I talk about a lot, how it's really like such a shame that so many of Viz's titles, um, especially their shoujo titles, because they have so many shoujo titles, are just not accessible in the same way that Shonen Jump titles are. However, uh, I woke up this morning and they just fucking shadow dropped the app and, and and a subscription like I'm actually shocked I still can't believe I woke up to this and it's actually fucking hilarious because obviously Kodansha is launching their app like by the end of the week like in a couple of days and they've been like teasing this for weeks which I have honestly haven't been caring about it at all because it's US only so like I don't care because I can't get it and granted the Viz one is only US and Canada right now as well however I cannot believe Viz just actually shadow dropped this right before the K-Manga launch because this is actually such a boss move. But if you haven't heard, Viz Media launched their new subscription service and it's like, I think it's $1.99 US dollars a month. It's $2.99 Canadian a month. Um, it is on top of the Shonen Jump subscription. So if you already have that, you have to pay on top of that, which I think is kind of like a weird move. Like I think they should just have a bundle subscription. Like it's so stupid. But anyway, point is there is now a separate subscription that includes uh, a lot of, not all of their uh, non-Shonen Jump titles. It does include a whole bunch of shojo titles. It includes some like Jose Seinen and other Shonen that are not under the Shonen Jump uh, imprint as well. So like, for example, Case Closed is one that I'm really excited to get to because Detective Conan, which is what I called it, is a anime series that I watched a lot growing up in Chinese. <laughs> so I actually like don't know what it's like in English, but I've never actually read the manga for this. So I'm actually really, really excited. I think it'll just be like a fun one to kind of chip away at. There's like over a thousand chapters. So obviously I'm not getting caught up anytime soon. Um, but there's so many shoujo titles that I either want to read, reread. Um, some of my all time favorites are on there. So Lovely Complex is on there. Um, Kimini Totoke is on there. Uh, Beauty Pop. I think I saw High School Debut, Coco Debut, another really, really good one that I really loved growing up. And so like, I'm just so stoked that this is here. And also from a technical standpoint, I've always said this about the Shonen Jump app, but it is actually just like one of the smoothest UIs. Um, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. But anyway, all that to say, they do have Daytime Shooting Star on the app. And I think I'm going to finally read it. I know that there is a love triangle. I know that there is 
a student teacher age gap romance situation, which I know that a lot of people don't like. I don't necessarily dislike it, um, especially in shoujo. It is a very common trope in shoujo. It doesn't like super, super bother me unless it's like really, really, really problematic. Um, like in Cardcaptor Sakura, even though I do love that series as well. Um, the student teacher relationship in that is like super fucked up. But generally speaking, I can usually kind of like look past it a little bit. But also I've heard that in Daytime Shooting Star, it's actually handled relatively well overall in terms of the entire story arc. So I'm intrigued to see how it plays out, but I actually do really want to read it. Like I said in my last reading vlog, I really enjoy it in the clear moonlit dusk. And so I do want to check out Mika Yamamori's past works. Um, so I feel like Daytime Shooting Star is probably a good place to start. I don't know when I'm going to be able to check in next because I honestly don't know how much time I will have to read if I'm going to have to like be commuting back and forth from my house to my parents' house to shower, basically. Um, so I don't really know what's going to happen, but I will check in with you once I have some more updates or once the situation at my house is, is figured out. Hello friends, it is later in the evening, I am home. Um, the water is temporarily back on in my house, not fully. It's fine, it's manageable. At least I can like pee now in my apartment, you know? Still can't take a shower, but it's okay, we'll survive. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly update and give like my very first impressions of Daytime Shooting Star because I've already read the first three volumes and so far I am really, really enjoying this. <laughs> like, is the student teacher relationship it's not even really a relationship. It's more like she has a crush on her teacher and her teacher is not doing the most to push her away. But here's the thing. I can overlook a little problematic romance, in my opinion, because I also feel like, so basically there's like two love interests. There's like him and then there's like the second love interest, which is a student. I personally feel like it's very obvious that she's going to end up with the kid that is like her age. Um, watch me eat my words if she doesn't end up with him. But I kind of just get the vibe the way that it's presented that the whole crush on the teacher thing is meant to be like a character growth moment rather than an actual romance. Again, will I eat my words? Possibly, possibly. But anyway, this series is only 12 volumes long and I believe the entire series is already on the app. So I'm gonna read as far as I can, basically. I will check in with you probably tomorrow once I finish the series. Um, and hopefully also maybe if I have some updates on, what's my book called? There Will Come a Darkness. <laughs> anyway, I will see you at the next check-in. Good morning, friends. Happy Wednesday. I cannot believe it's only Wednesday. <laughs> I like I feel like most weeks go by so slowly now but I think because of the whole situation yesterday and also I just ended up having dinner with my family because I was already at my parents place and it just like felt like such a long day and it felt like so much later in the week than Tuesday but it was only Tuesday but anyway I wanted to check in because I did actually end up finishing daytime shooting star last night and I ended up giving this 3.5 stars in the end like I definitely see the hype like I definitely understand why this is such a well-loved series I think that it's a very good kind of coming of age story also Mamura and Suzume are like my children okay like every time I see them in a panel together I'm like these are my children like they're so fucking cute I think they're adorable. I will say that I think that if you are sensitive to the age gap, the student teacher romance thing, I don't think I would recommend this for you. It is a big portion of the manga. And like I said, it doesn't like super bother me too much in like fiction. And I do think that especially in daytime shooting star in, in something like this where the adults in the manga recognize and like call out how bad this behavior is. Um, on the kind of like male leads part. I think that that definitely does quite a lot in terms of like making it clear that this is not like appropriate. And so I don't necessarily feel like it's handled super badly in Daytime Shooting Star. The reason why this isn't like a four star series for me is because I think the ending is just rushed. Like I definitely feel like by like the 10th volume, I was like, how are we gonna wrap this up in like less than three volumes? Like I definitely was like, what the hell? And then like by the last two chapters, I was like, there's no way in hell this manga is ending in two chapters. Like this is so ridiculous. Um, so it was just like really rushed for me at the end. Um, and I just wish there was like 
an extra maybe like two volumes. I just think that the pacing was a bit off at the end there. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. I also, before I went to bed, started rereading Kimi ni Todoke, and it's just so good. I've read the series and watched the series so many times at this point, but like, I just love it so much. It is so popular for a reason, and I think that like, for me, I just think that it's like the best execution of that like, shy girl popular guy trope, and like, the friendships are so good in this. Oh, I didn't even mention in Daytime Shooting Star, one of the things I like the most about it is actually like um, Suzume, her kind of like friend group, like all the girls, like I just love their friendship, their little friend group, especially her friendship with Yuka. Like they're so fucking cute. Like I just really love them together and I really, really enjoy their friendship. Um, but anyway, back to Kimi ni Todake, I just love it so much. Like it's so good. Like he is so obsessed with her and like rightfully so, you know? And it's just like, the fucking cutest. I love it. I love it. And also like toxic masculinity, nowhere to be found. I love it. It's just such a good series and it never gets old. It never gets old in my opinion. But anyway, I think I'm on like volume three ish for that one now. Made no progress on uh, There Will Come a Darkness. I will try again today. <laughs> I really do want to finish it because I was like really enjoying it. So I just want to keep reading it. But honestly, this like this manga app has like changed the fucking game for me, honestly. I've always said this about the Shonen Jump app. It is the cheapest and the most affordable way to just try out a lot of manga and like see what you like. Um, obviously before with Shonen Jump, you only have access to Shonen, but there are still a lot of titles within Shonen Jump. There is still enough of a range, I feel, even within Shonen Jump that like you can kind of figure out what you like and what you don't like and then branch out from there. And now with like Viz Media and with so many more demographics covered in Viz Media than just Shonen Jump, like one specific imprint, I think that that broadens the horizons even more. And I think that if, again, if you are looking to get into manga, if you don't know your taste yet like this subscription is actually just like such a good way to just try out a whole bunch of different things but anyway i've talked enough about that i feel like no one's actually interested and i'm just like babbling on but um i will check in with you once i have more updates hopefully once i have finished there will come a darkness that is the goal for the end of this week but yeah that is it for this check in and i will see you at the next one hello friends happy saturday it's been a couple of days since i last checked in life is really kicking me in the ass this week. I've had a lot of like socialization more so than I normally would. And also I think because usually at work, I actually don't have to interact with people that often, but this week I've had a lot of meetings. And so like work has been more socially draining than normal. But anyway, the work week is over and finally it's Saturday, even though actually I have a lot of socializing this weekend too. I actually like walking a 10K tomorrow, <laughs> which is ridiculous because I'm so unfit. And I signed up for this back in like January and I was like, I'm gonna train for this. Do you know who hasn't done a single bit of training for this 10K? Me, me. Anyway, point is, I have actually finished as of this morning, There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. Um, and I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I feel like I've already kind of given a lot of my thoughts about this book. But like I said in the previous check-ins, I just had so much fun with this book. I think it's definitely a setup book. I think if you're someone who likes something a little bit faster paced, maybe this won't be for you. In a lot of ways, the pacing reminds me a lot of We Hunt the Flame, um, which I really love. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And like the reason why I feel like the pacing feels fast, even though the overall plot line pacing is quite slow, is because it has really short chapters and it keeps you gripped. Every single chapter makes you want to keep reading. And so in that sense, the pacing feels fast. But I guess kind of like the overarching plot line develops quite slowly. And I feel the same way about this book. The chapters are short. If you like short chapters, this book has got you, okay? I think at most the chapters are like 10 pages long. Um, and I personally really like that. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. And I also know that ev not everyone likes um, a slowly developing plot line in the way that this does. But I feel like the way that it ended, it sets up the rest of the series really, really well. Like I feel like this book really just sets up the world, the kind of like prophecy that we're playing with. Um, and by the end of the book, you really see all the different pieces coming together. Um, I also will say, I think this book is very predictable. Um, I don't say that in a bad way. I actually don't think that predictability is necessarily a bad thing. I do know that there are some negative reviews of this book that say that it's really predictable. And I agree with that fundamentally. Like I do think right from the beginning, as soon as they start telling you the prophecy, you're kind of like, suspecting whether or not certain things the book is telling you is true or not. And I think that 
it's very obvious what it's going to be. But for me personally, that doesn't take away from the payoff of it and seeing those things that you suspect come to fruition, if that makes sense. I think it's funny because I think earlier in this vlog, I cr like said that I gave the Millhouse murderers two stars because I th thought it was predictable. But I think it's different in like a mystery where I think a lot of the book relies on the shock factor. And I think with mysteries, I enjoy a good like plot twist. But I think with like a fantasy where there's like the trope of like having a prophecy and like having different like misleading kind of plot lines and story arcs and characters, I think that predictability is not necessarily a bad thing in a book like this personally. I don't know. I know I sound hypocritical because like I said, I gave another book two stars for being predictable. And yet I'm saying that I didn't mind the predictability in this book. Um, it all comes down to execution. That's really what it comes down to. I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was just such a fun time. And I'm so pleasantly surprised at how much I really liked it. Obviously, I was intrigued by it. But I didn't know anything going into this book. I had no idea what it was even about remotely. Um, and so I am just really, really stoked that I enjoyed it so much. And like I said, I gave this four stars. Um, but I think overall the series could be like a new favorite YA series, maybe. Maybe not a favorite favorite, but definitely one that like I will happily recommend any day of the week. I actually started book two already. <laughs> um, I'm only like 20 pages and 25 pages into it. So I'm not that far into it, but I didn't know what to read next. And I was kind of like, you know what? I have book two. I might as well just continue on. Um, and so far I'm enjoying it. I mean, we're picking up where we're leaving off. I think we're following the same POVs. I don't know if we get new POVs in book two. I'm intrigued. But anyway, that is it for today. That is it for this vlog. I guess this is a good place to end the vlog. And as always, if you stuck around till the end, I super, super appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you can't think of anything, leave me a fire emoji um, because it is semi related to this book. I won't say why, but leave me a fire emoji. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.